Welcome to the Powered on Tech podcast with your host, Asher Dupree. Plug in and power up for today's hottest tech topics. Hey everyone, what is up? How's it going? And welcome back to the Powered on Tech podcast. I'm joined today with my two guests, Isaac from Isaac Productions and my amazing cousin, Dwash. So we've got a lot planned. We've got a bunch of tech stories. We're going to do some tech trivia and I'll explain the mystery behind why my YouTube channel was deleted. All right, Josh, how's it going? Hello. Hi. Hello. Um, and Isaac, how's it going for you? Hey, it's it's fine. How are you? I'm doing great. I hear you are on vacation. Where where are you exactly? Uh, I um I I just had a flight to France. France. And you are from the UK. Yeah, correct. I yeah I live in the UK. Nice. So, um, Josh and Isaac, we are going to start off the podcast with a trivia question, and then we will type our answers in chat, and then we'll just do these like regularly throughout the podcast, and then at the end we can reveal the answers, count at points. All right. Okay. The first question is, who invented the World Wide Web? And then you could just type your answers in the chat. Okay. Um, oh, you put it in general? All right. To watch this Bill Gates. No idea. <coughs> Sorry about that. Isaac says no idea. I have no idea either. Um, so Yeah, neither did I. Bill Gates was a good guess, though. Yeah, that's a great guess, Joe. So that was sort of a fail, I guess. We don't know that for whatever reason. So we had something exciting happen. Um, the Samsung event took place. We, we got some some interesting stuff first thing i want to talk about is the galaxy tab ultra it's a 14 inch tablet joe like you, the ipad that you're on right now is about nine inches so think about almost double that it's 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 literally larger than the screen of my laptop and you're using it as a tablet i think they're constantly trying to make uh, I, uh tablets and stuff bigger every year which makes time. sense because like you were saying just before the podcast like editing is better on larger devices and i think everyone's kind of making a push to yeah make... but if they want to edit i think they would go on a, like a computer i and agree edit. but that's the whole thing everyone's doing like now we have da vinci on the ipad and everyone's trying to turn it to a computer i'm not a um, fan but i don't know i think it's like a goal of getting rid of laptops and computers and making tablets like the main superior product to use now for the wow. future yeah well why do, you, why do you think apple made the magic keyboard for the ipad pro and um, ipads have the performance of a laptop now like iPad. yeah with the new m2 chip added to the, the yeah, pro insane. models and the yeah. m wait does the I, iPad Air have the M2 or is it the M1? M1. I think M1. Yeah, so Apple is basically even making the M1 iPad Air almost as powerful as the older M1 computer. I know. It's just an odd decision because Macs are more expensive. So you would think, and not just Macs, but like most computers are more expensive than most laptops. So it would make sense that you would want to make the laptop replace the tablet like what they were doing with like the the laptops that like fold backwards because then the users have to buy the more expensive option it just seems like an odd decision to yeah. get rid of the laptop i think it's a cool idea though because ipads are just cool in general and like the whole touch screen thing with the keyboard is just a cool concept but this I'm kind saying, of go ahead the this kind of uh, reminds me of the Asus dual screen laptop. 
which has like a one screen above the keyboard and another main screen, which you can uh, edit like video. A, like a touch bar, but big. Yeah, like a really big touch bar. Mm -hmm. I think they're trying to uh, make it sort of a laptop slash a tablet. Yeah. Or kind of like just the like... Microsoft Surface tablets. Yep. Yeah, he, he's using a Surface Pro right now. Yeah. Oh, cool. So that basically, is that a tablet that becomes a computer, or is it a computer that becomes a that, tablet? It's kind of like an iPad. It, it's a desktop-based uh, tablet that you can detach the keyboard and use it as a tablet. But what yeah, so separates a tablet and a laptop? Is it the operating system? Uh, it runs Windows 11, so yeah, I think so. Okay, but if the same device were to run Android 11, then it would be a tablet oh. that becomes a laptop. I think ROG uh, released a uh, gaming, <coughs> uh, sort of like a Nintendo Switch, and it runs Windows 11 as well. And it comes yeah, the Asus, the Asus ROG Ally, it's supposed yeah. to compete against the Steam Deck, like uh -huh. a PC, PC handheld kind of thing. Yeah, it, it actually runs Windows 11. Yeah, so does the Steam Deck. They're like meant to compete. Asus made a bunch of bold claims saying it's more powerful than the Steam Deck. Is it true? Uh, sort of, but the Steam Deck is selling a lot better than the Asus ROG Ally. Wasn't the Steam Deck because I've never heard of the Asus? I think Steam Deck runs on Steam OS. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, but yeah. there's also a, there's also a Windows mode in settings where you can turn it in, into like a computer. Is it really? Uh, yeah, you have to go in settings though. That's like. Four gigabytes though, so Windows is just pre-installed and not turned on. Yeah, it runs on the Steam OS, but it has Windows on it, and you can run Windows through settings. So then, theoretically, you can install Mac OS on the Steam Deck. Yeah, actually, actually, I don't know if you could do that. Maybe. Well, you can install Mac OS on Windows, so you can install. Wait. Really? Plus on Windows on yes, people have done it. I watch. I I keep trying to uh make my Mac OS run Windows sometimes for like some gaming stuff, and the only uh, good thing is Parallels. Nothing else actually yeah, works. Yeah, but it costs like a bunch of money. Yeah, so I just ran the free trial, and it's not worth it. It doesn't work very well. It it works pretty well, but it's really expensive, and it's yeah, not it ideal. The price is too much. Uh huh. Also at the um, Samsung event, we we got the Galaxy Z Flip 5 and the Z Fold 5. They didn't change a lot, just the Z Flip has like this massive screen on the front. Yep, it's the fold crazy. light screen. Like the fold light screen that uh, yeah. actually has on use now. Like uh, for, uh, for the last one, I think it displayed the time and stuff. But now you can actually uh, do uh, like view your camera when you're taking pictures and stuff. Here's the thing with the foldable phones. I'm still not a fan of them, and they just seem like a novelty. Like one one use case of the foldable might be that you could use the main camera to take selfies and still see what you're doing. But the main camera on the Z Flip is the same quality as the selfie camera on like an iPhone. Yeah, I still think they're a bit gimmicky. Like, they don't have, uh, they don't- They are gimmicks, that's what they are. Yeah. They, they, they have a fold, uh, like, for the fold part, you actually split the battery in, in two parts, I think. For the hinge, so it's like, on the top yeah, and bottom I of the hinge? Yeah, have uh, two ba batteries, one on the top of the hinge and one on the bottom of the hinge. I think that makes that's... sense. I don't like the little crease you can see in the- foldable phones when you fold it in the screen yeah and you can feel like, it too yeah it's like a little plastic you kind of feeling indention i mean the pixel fold has a really big bezel i don't know if you see bro i forgot about the pixel fold that's an ugliest yeah, device ever terrible. it's the horrible um, it looks so bad it's thick and it costs like a thousand dollars yeah I, yeah, that's I way think too much. Worst product of the year. 
Or, yeah. Yeah, it was like $2,000. It was 1700 $1,700. I think yeah. the new Motorola Razr, though, looks awesome. I agree. The Razr Plus, whatever the new one is, it has the bigger screen on it when folded. Yeah, I'm still not a fan of the folding phones, but the Motorola Razr Edge Plus, whatever they call it, is pretty cool. It's, it's good that they're trying to be modern again, because... Uh, when I think of Motorola, I think of like the uh, ancient flip phones. So it's, mm -hmm. I'm glad they're innovating. Yeah, and it's they... cool that they're bringing back like their roots, basically. Yeah, because they used to make foldable, so they have the most experience out of the other people, mm -hmm. like the companies. But that's still like a completely different kind of foldable. Yeah, but the, they know how to make like phones that fold, and they know like the battery where they should place the battery and stuff so yeah they have an advantage like i understand that the flip like the flip series the, the samsung flip those are all like supposed to be emulating an old flip phone there was that one samsung commercial where like an old lady like saw it and it, like she had a flashback or whatever but it's a completely different thing yeah it's not even the same concept of, of folding or flipping or whatever do you think apple should make a foldable I think no. they shouldn't. No, they don't. Yeah, I see renders on uh, Twitter or X. Uh, they changed Yeah, X. Up. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a yeah. story. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And uh, the, the renders were pretty trash, to be honest. Like, it's not the people who made the renders. It's uh, an iPhone doesn't really look well as a foldable. I know. An iPhone doesn't really look well as anything unless it's specifically yeah. an iphone yeah but uh like uh, think about the vision pro they made it and like uh, after like three years people would uh go, like people would think it's normal but uh, that could happen with foldable iphones i mean it kind of already yeah. did happen it's already been three years uh-huh it's, it's been five years this is the fifth generation of just samsung's foldables and yeah. it already is normal. I've seen plenty of people walking around with folding phones. And it, of course, I've never owned one, so I can't really speak for like how useful they really are. But it just seems like such a gimmick and something that if if foldables are really like popular, uh, turns popular in the te in ten years time, I think Apple should make an attempt to, on a foldable so. Yeah, maybe if if it's just because people are buying them. But, like, each phone has its own advantage. S22 Ultra, S23 Ultra has an amazing camera. iPhone has great software. The, the special feature of the Samsung Flip is that it can fit in your pocket, which, like... Yeah, I mean, here's a theory. I mean, uh, the, like, VR, AR glass, uh, the uh, headset and stuff, they, uh, I think, what was the company again? Uh, I forgot. Like, I forgot the company that made uh, the VR headset. Like, Oculus. Of... Yeah, Oculus. Uh, Meta. Mm -hmm. uh, Meta Quest. Yep. Uh, they made it for like uh some time, and I think Apple wants to actually see if it's popular, and well, uh, like they tested it out, and uh after that they released it to the public. Like, they don't want it to fail, and they've seen the success of like AR VR headsets, so they made it. Like they well, release. That's, that's Apple's trend with everything. They're yep. never like the the one that like first makes a new product category, but they make sure that it's successful and popular before they completely blow everyone else out of the water and make the best version of that product that's possible. Which yeah. Is smart. Yeah. I think Apple. some Apple just hate Apple for that. Like they don't like Apple because they always copy uh, people's idea. And make but them they, better. But they only like, copy the good things. Yeah, but Ad uh, you know Android users, they they kind of like uh, Android and hate on Apple, so they, they keep saying that uh, Apple is copying other stuff from Android, like always on display. I mean, what's Apple going to do, though? Not copy them and not have these features? Oh, uh, yeah. Because Android but users can either be like, Apple copies our features, we don't like that, or Apple doesn't have features, Android is better. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's a, there's not really a, 
right way to do it besides inventing your own stuff, but yeah, I mean, Apple's normally the pioneer of products, but they're probably going to be really late to the foldable phones if that ever shoots off into popularity. Yeah, and anything Apple releases that is like not ready yet is it doesn't normally turn out well. <coughs> Apple Maps. <coughs> <laughs> Do you think so, they should make a flip phone fast or a fold phone fast, though? A uh, flip phone. Fold phones are even worse than the flip phone. Yeah. Flip I mean, phones. the hinge... The yeah. hinge is more noticeable. Is it? Fold phone, but... Oh, on the fold I phones think... are more noticeable? Yeah, because it's bigger. Yeah, it's bigger, and you got a, a hinge on the middle of the screen. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a hinge on the it, middle of the screen on the flip. Yeah, but it's smaller, if you think about it. Yeah. It's bigger on the foldable phones. On flip phones, if they nail it, it's gonna be it's gonna be good if they uh, make it hingeless. Like, if you can't see the hinge. Yeah, also on the foldables, the phones are just so freaking tall. Like... Yeah. Like, whenever they are folded, it's almost impossible to use, and it just looks silly. Uh, wasn't they, like, in five, <laughs> they did it slightly taller, and they got, a, and there were, like, memes everywhere. Say that again, I was, I, I was coughing, and I couldn't hear you, it was my cough. Uh, I think they released the iPhone 5 or something, and they made it slightly taller or something. Oh, uh, yeah. There was a, yeah, there was a design. bunch of memes about that. There's a video. Somebody like glued a bunch of like iPhones together or something and made like a like that, a that three foot. Me, those kind of vibes. Yeah. Bro, imagine. Yeah, the video. folding phones are really tall and folded. They're like slim and tall. It's weird. The aspect ratio is completely off, and like apps aren't optimized to work like that. Uh huh. I think. Surface, uh, again, back to the Surface Pro, I think the aspect ratio is not that good, if I just search it up, uh, cause it, it's not, uh, wait, Surface Pro, uh, it's like, uh, wait, uh, three, uh, three, uh, three by two aspect ratio, and it's, pr it looks off. Uh, for the Surface Pro. what, it's like taller? Or uh, it's like uh, 2736 times uh, 1824, so it just looks off. It looks a bit, uh, it looks a bit too tall. Well, the Mac, but, Macs are taller, like a MacBook. Yeah, but uh, they nailed the aspect ratio. And the bezels of the Surface Pro was just really bad for the older model models. But it's... Is the iMac have the same like have the same aspect uh, ratio as the MacBook? I don't know. Or is it sixteen by nine? Because the Surface Pro has like an eighteen percent more vertical screen real estate than a typical laptop, so I think they're trying to make like the uh, the task uh, taskbar thing not affect the screen. Like they want to it to be a normal laptop, but or with the t uh, taskbar not affecting the viewing experience. Yeah, and that's basically what Mac did, because the MacBook Pro has a sixteen by ten aspect ratio, so it's a little bit taller, whereas the iMac has sixteen by nine. Uh. Which is actually well, interesting they didn't do it with the iMac because the whole functionality is that it hides the taskbar, I mean the, the menu bar and the dock. Uh-huh. But for 24-inch screens, you don't really uh, need to care that much about the uh, dock for iMac. I guess it makes sense. That makes sense. But, Six, why not? But they well, engineer it so whenever your dock and menu bar are at a default size, a full screen application like that that's sandwiched in between the menu of our dock will be a perfect 16 by 9 aspect ratio uh yeah so it fits in there which is good for like games and and browsers yeah. and stuff yeah but, yeah because iMac always got the 16 by 9 ratio so it's yeah 
They just didn't want to change it, I guess. Yeah, because it's, it's like the original uh, 4K and stuff. Uh, the original aspect ratio was 16 by 9 for popularity. Like, uh, everything uses 16 by 9. So they just don't want to change it, probably. Yeah. Hey, Josh, I have a question for you. He's muted. Joe, unmute. Alright, I'll just ask you. Oh, there you go. You unmuted? Yeah. Alright, so tell me, is a... Is a lifetime supply of Subway sandwiches valuable to you? <laughs> yes. I, I like subs. They're good. How I valuable? Could, I could live off of Subway sandwiches. So could I. But Like, for the rest of my life. I would, There's so bro. many different sandwich combinations. Like, how could you not? How valuable, though? Hmm. I don't know. Would you be willing to, like, legally change your name to Subway? <laughs> no. No. No? Because Subway is actually giving people a lifetime supply of Subway sandwiches if they legally change the name to Subway. That is actually happening right now. They did that before with a tattoo, I think. Three by three, uh, three inch by three inch tattoo. And they gave them a, like, life, a lifetime sandwich. Bro, so how many people did that? Because that's like a really good deal. A foot long tattoo. If they may, uh, like, yeah, I see in that. I saw a Burnt Rivera video and it didn't work. You would get like a three foot long if you had a tattoo, yep, but not like a foot long supply. I think there was, the, uh, like in 2022, a man got a 12, uh, 12 by 12 inch back tattoo and uh, he got a free, uh, he got free sandwiches for life from Subway. That's crazy. Did did uh did Subway give him the design or? Uh, wait. Let me just go back to the article. Uh, he got a fifty thousand Subway gift card. I think Subway gave. Uh, I don't know if Subway gave him the design. Nice. Fifty thousand dollars is basically. What? Lifetime. I I think. I mean, your average Subway sandwich is about ten dollars. If you get a sandwich a day, that is three thousand six hundred and fifty dollars. Also, yeah, also that, that's a lifetime supply, at least also, ten years. So, uh, uh, look, uh, basically, if you go to the pool, that's going to be really embarrassing because you got a What's whole this? subway series twenty twenty two. That's pretty get cool. It on your thigh, then. <laughs> it's too big to fit on your thigh. I know. Yeah. Covers his entire back. That's yeah, it's awesome. really embarrassing. <laughs> Not really. You could turn it into like. Yeah, but uh, do you really want a subway tattoo for the rest of your life on your back? I mean, you could always get it removed. I don't. Uh, if they get removed, do they get removed completely? I don't think they do. I, I think know, it's but like. Do you think you go into the subway shop and like, no, because they give you a gift card, so it's not like they like say like take your shirt off. We want to see the tattoo before we give you a sandwich. I think for the first time, yeah, because they have to actually confirm that you got the yeah, tattoo. Yeah, but after that, you can get it removed. Yep. Because you still have the gift card. You could, or you could, you could try to fake it somehow. Yep. Huh. Uh, and there's got to be somebody already named Subway, right? I think uh, if you remove a tattoo, it still it still uh, has some like some uh, part parts of it left uh, rem not removed. It's not like it's it got you got some scars from it and stuff, so you can still just faintly see it. I think. <laughs> I'm just gonna search for Subway Smith. Just see if that's a person. It's just showing me results for Subway restaurants. Yep, there's. I don't think there's anybody currently named Subway. 
I'm just thinking, like, I, if your name was already Subway and then they did that deal, then you would just win the gift card? Or do you have to do it after the deal? I th I think Subway's uh, Subway's nailing it for the uh, for the ads and stuff because for the uh, when they do the, these kind of things they actually uh, like get the hype from people. And, yeah, they get a lot uh, of press. Yep, and it's doing really great for the business. Yeah. All right, how about we do another trivia question to cool. merge these two topics? What was the first publicly available Google service? I'm typing my answer. I mean, I think it's Google search. Oh, y'all are putting it in general. Yeah, Google search is my my guess. I'm not positive. Um, wasn't wasn't Google called something before that? Google had a first name. It was like Ask Albert or something. Uh, I'm gonna find this. Archie. It was called Archie. I think it's called Backrob for their uh, for their search engine. Yeah, but before that, in 1990, the first like oh, there's a screenshot of it. It was called Archie. Wait, can you still use Archie? Uh. I think 1996 uh, it's called Backrub. It was it was called Backrub then. Yep. I think that was its first name. I want to use Archie, but I guess it's shut down now. Yeah. Oh, archiesearch.com. Is that it? Archie search. Oh no, that's not it. It's like a recruitment I agency. Think it's not they might have sort of shut it down. We have enough trivia to uh, to do a few in between the, the things, so we'll do one more question. Where is Silicon Valley located? I'll type my answer. The answer is, and I think the answer is the San Francisco Bay Area in California. Joe says San Ramon. Joe. Josh, where's San Ramon? The it's California Bay Area, but if we're being specific, it's in the San Jose Metroplex in Silicon Valley. It's Silicon Valley. Yeah, it's I in Silicon Valley. Yeah, I don't know America that well, but I know it's in California because Apple Park is in California as well. Yeah, Apple Park's in Cupertino, so probably. Not. Yeah. I think Cupertino is a little bit south of the Bay Area, maybe north, maybe. Cupertino's east. like, uh, it's more zoomed in, but California is a bigger area, so I don't know, like. Cupertino is kind of a small, small town. Does it count? Does California count? Uh, yeah, that'll count as an answer. Sure. All right, Joe is heading off somewhere different, so he's leaving the pod. Bye, Bye guys. Later, Joe. Bye. And he left. That's all right. Now it's just Isaac and I. We shall continue. So Elon, the other night, he uh, yeah, he he said I don't like the Twitter name. I'm gonna change it to something called X. And in an interview, he explained that. This is a 22-year-old plan to make X.com, which is kind of the app for everything. Didn't he make a flashing logo that flashed at like people living nearby, and they had it removed because it they was had it removed this morning, I believe. Yes, and it, it actually it was super bright, which is fine, but it was flashing Morse code, which if that's coming in like through your windows, that's really annoying. And the Morse code spell out, it's bright enough, I believe. That's yeah, I see you, and it's like super bright. And, and clearly, it's... clearly, it was bright enough. But I don't think they're taking it down because of it was of how bright it was. I think they're gonna. They might make a version. New logo. Of... Well, because might... that that logo is just a temporary logo. Yeah, but uh, I think they got like eighteen complaints in the, the span of like two days. 
after that lot of complaints. Yeah. And as um, of right now, the X logo is just like the, the little emoji. I'll put it in the title, but you can see what the emoji looks like. Oh. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I tried turning off uh, auto updates on my phone to get a. Because I don't really like the name X. To keep the Twitter but, app. Yeah, but uh, ran it randomly uh, updated for me even when I turned off auto updates for apps. Because they probably just updated the information that was on the server. Yeah. And not an actual new version. I have the X app oh. as well. I feel like uh, in like 10 years time, somebody's going to pop up with a phone that still has the original Twitter. I already saw somebody on threads that was selling like an iPhone 12 Pro with the original Twitter app. And they basically just turn on airplane mode and took out the SIM card and they, they were selling it for like $4,000 <laughs> already. Yeah, but it's pro most of the price is probably for the phone. Like it's probably a thousand dollars for the phone, but it's still an extra like two thousand dollars that wasn't there. And I don't, I don't think it was like completely serious. Uh huh. I think it was like meant to be a joke. Yeah, but I'm pretty Engineer sure. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure somebody actually bought it. Oh really? Mhm. Mm I could that, be wrong though. That's crazy. So we're already making sales on what you're saying. And it, it's just sad that like the the Twitter bird is dead because it's uh it's seventeen years old. So I th I think Elon kind of ruined Twitter. So so he made it, yeah he ruined the brand so he made a, a new brand. Uh -huh. Basically, which is I smart and stupid at the same time. Million people left Twitter act after Elon bought it. A million. Oh, looks like Joe is back on the pod, using his alt. <laughs> hey. Hey, uh, sneak in. Nice. Why, why do you have to use your alt? Is your main account not on your iPad Yeah, my main account's been taken away from me. What, what device are you using? My phone. Nice. Your audio sounds really good. Talking about yeah, I know, my phone has way better has a way better microphone yep iphone 13 mini what were you saying isaac about your microphone uh uh i'm using the rode video mic ntg i'm using the blue snowball uh, which kind of like the twitter thing i decided to buy the blue snowball mic because logitech was buying the blue brand and they were starting to put the logitech logo onto it so oh. i thought it would be a good idea to like buy it before they started doing that so i could have the original version i think the uh snowball microphone was kind of like the og microphone for youtube like l it was cheap and loads of people were using it for it, content. It, yeah and it still holds up it's a really good microphone and it's like 30 dollars it's kind of like the og microphone for youtube yeah mkbhd like, every, everyone used the blue snowball mic and it kind of fell out i guess but maybe once Logitech buys it and slaps their logo on it, it'll kind of have a revival somewhat. All right, let's do another trivia question. Who is the co-founder of Microsoft? Co-founder. Co-founder. I think his name was like Bob Allen or something. I, th I thought it was like Paul. Put it, put it in the trivia questions chat. Paul, Paul Allen, Joe, Joe, put the two together. Okay, Paul Allen. I'm gonna put it in the trivia questions chat. Paul Allen. Oh, I spelled that wrong. All right, so uh, something interesting happened um, this weekend. I was checking my email and then I got an email from YouTube and I'm gonna go ahead and just read it to y'all okay um, let me find it here's the first email hi okay so let me give a little context actually I have I, I had 
past tense, I had a secret channel, and I guess I could share the name with you. It was called Louie Maroney. I posted just some cool visual effects shots on there as social experiments. I posted a video of like some orbs in a room, and a bunch of people commented on it, talking all spiritual and stuff about the fake orbs that I put in After Effects. And overall, it was, uh, it was a pretty cool channel. It had about 20,000 views on it. And yeah, it was a little secret I had, but I got this email. Hi, Louie Maroney. We have reviewed your content and found severe or repeated violations of our community guidelines. Because of this, we have removed your channel from YouTube. We know this is probably upsetting news, but it's our job to make sure that YouTube is a safe place for all. If we think a channel severely violates our policies, we take it down to protect other users from the platform on the platform. But if you believe we've made a wrong call, you can appeal this decision. You'll find more information about how the policy in question and how to submit an appeal below. And there was no other information about like what exactly the channel had violated, so I appealed it and they sent me a, a second email. We've reviewed your appeal for the following. I've reviewed your channel carefully and have confirmed that it violates our community guidelines. We know this is probably disappointing news, but it's our job to make sure YouTube is a safe place for all. How this affects your channel. We won't be putting your channel back up on YouTube. Thanks, the YouTube team. So, that's, well, that's impressive the story. Yeah, the YouTube executives took down one of my channels for no reason. Yeah. No reason. <laughs> Uh, did you know anything about what might have happened? That no, I have no idea. What if it was the comments? The comments were fine. I get an email for every comment, and I check my email. All the comments are fine, and I don't think the comments can get a video taken down, or let alone a whole channel. And the comment. What? I think YouTube takes down the comment if it violates. Yeah, YouTube would just take down the comment. It wouldn't take down the channel that the owns the video that the comment was made on. What exactly did you post again? Alright, so I'll give a list of videos off the top of my head. There is a plane crash visual effects and after effects. It wasn't, it wasn't violent at all. Just a plane that kind of flies like down below some trees in the distance. I posted a paranormal ghost video. I posted some orbs, and I posted uh, Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse leaked scene. That's really, it. If it really violated- they, they were all shorts. Violated like uh, copyrights and stuff, I think. They would only send you an email. They wouldn't take down the whole channel, so no. that's- kind And of it didn't even- it didn't even violate any copyright. Did you get the, a copyright? Uh, no, no copyright strike. I did use some music from the Spider-Man movie on the Spider-Man video, but I think the video was less than five was less than six seconds. That so wouldn't get, have been taken down. I know, and I wouldn't even get copyrighted because it's less than six seconds. How many subs did you have? Uh, about twenty-two, I believe. Twenty-two, and YouTube cared that much to take down your entire channel. Mm-hmm. Basically. That's ridiculous. It That's is. Crazy. It's it's absolutely stupid. I, I tried to email them about like what had happened and they're just not responding. As a creator myself, uh YouTube support's like crazy to get to. You basically it's impossible to get to YouTube support to chat yeah. with a real human. Even with Corridor had trouble doing that and they have like nine million subscribers or something. I mean YouTube should uh make a chat like live chat or something loads of company have to like help the creators with stuff i mean I it's impossible to i feel get like to youtube use. creators are smart enough to do most of the things you can do on the web but most of the time if we're reaching out to support we need something that like a real human has to do yeah like i tried reaching out to youtube support because uh, they always took down my comments uh, like always disabled my comments on my oh, video oh yeah they did that to me too i reached out for the same reason where you would like enable them and then you would upload it and like the next day yep, the comments are disabled hey that yeah. is crazy i think it has to do something because i put up my channel when i was only like 10 yeah same so, okay but now they don't do it anymore uh they don't uh, yeah or i think my comments will... were uh in 
my comments were all enabled, are all enabled right now. Yeah, same for me. I so, I guess they realized like, hey, this kid looks 10, so we'll automatically start enabling comments in three years or whatever. Yeah, because they did that to me so often when, like, when I was like, uh, last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they did that with every every single video, and it had to go and re-enable all of them. So that's yeah. interesting that that happens with other people. Yeah, that's yeah. been a problem on my channel. There's like really? all the comments, all the comments on my videos are disabled. That's really weird. <laughs> we could uh, like uh, enable it, but it would just be disabled again. Really? Yeah, strange. you can enable it for like. So I think that whenever you enable it, when you upload it, it gets turned off the next day. And if you enable it again, then I think it goes for like 30 days and then it turns it off. Uh-huh. I mean, after, uh, but it's really annoying. It's like very annoying because yeah, I- Yeah, that's the some... perfect word to describe it. It's just annoying. I got some like uh, good positive comments and when not, if they disable it, it's, it's all gone. Well, for me, if they disable it, I still have the comments once I enable it again. Uh, for it's some, just... yeah. For some, it kind of disappeared. I don't know why. Yeah, just, just weird. Uh-huh. So, those are all of our topics. I guess let's go ahead and finish up the trivia, and then we could close out the podcast, unless any of y'all have oh. any other topics you want to go over. All right. Okay, let's see. What is the storage capacity of standard Blu-ray disc? Okay, so let me think here. I know one of my YouTube videos in 4K is about, I want to say one and a half gigabytes. So, with that logic, a little bit more than 4K, let's say two gigabytes, it's about three minutes. Blu-ray disc, but well, it's play like Blu-ray disc probably uh, plays an entire movie sometimes. So yeah, or sometimes two movies. Standard. Let's see. I would say uh, twenty gigabytes. Twenty-five. Um, yeah. Let's see. So three minutes is two gigabytes. I say fifty gigabytes. I gotta, I'm gonna think about this before I put in a final answer. So I know 70 divided by 30 is, is that right? Yeah, 70 divided by 30 is 2.333. Um, so then I would do three times 2.333, And that gets me up to seven minutes times 10, 60. So what are the integers? It goes 256. No, no, it goes um, 25. Because they actually do it in integers. They go from 8 to 16 to 32. So what's closest to 60 gigabytes? I'll do a quick Google search. 60 gigabytes. Um... Uh, that's my final answer, 60 gigabytes. And we'll just do whoever gets it closer, all right? Can I change my answer to 50? Because mm -hmm. I did the math and it's not 25. Yeah, it has to be more. And that's assuming yeah. it's like a little bit more than 4K. Because they also have to have information for like the menu where you select like I, play. I think every layer of the Blu-ray disc is 25 gigabytes. I don't know, because, like, that would make sense for a normal movie, but if you're going to make a standard Blu-ray disc, you might as well make it a good amount longer than the movie. Because you yeah. got to remember, 70 minutes is only, like, for the... that That's the minimum for a feature film. I'm changing my answer to 110 gigabytes. Uh, do any of you guys have a Blu-ray, uh, like, player? No. I mean, I do, but it's, like... In a closet or something. We used to have a DVD <coughs> player like four years ago, and then we finally got Xfinity. 
But it's we, crazy. It's we crazy. We never used our the... Blu-ray disc. We would only use our DVD. So I don't really know. It's crazy think... that like Blu-ray and DVD is now old. It, it used to be you know, like, like, this new thing. School PCs. I think they have a D DVD reader or stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like old school PCs. Does the Mac Pro have have a DVD reader? No. It, uh, they tried to make it like minimalistic, so no. Well, that's weird because my Magic Keyboard has a little like eject thing on the top, the top right. What thing? Oh. It, it looks like the eject button on like a DVD remote. Eject button. Uh. It's like a like a like a weird looking home icon. Uh, where? Top right. On the top right. I I have the Magic Keyboard. Gen one, so. I think it's just uh, for you to turn off your computer, because my 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 top right got a touch ID, and some keyboards don't have a touch ID button, like some Magic keyboards. Mm -hmm. It's probably just a turn off the computer button. But that would only work on like an iMac or a Mac Pro. That would work on a la uh, a Mac. Any Mac? Because it doesn't work on my MacBook. It doesn't do anything. No. Uh, I think. I think it should. Uh, probably reach out to Apple about it to ask. Or I could reach out to Safari. What yeah, cut. Does top right home button on Magic keyboard do? Let me throw some music back up in the background. Magic keyboard. Sorry about the Discord pings. Um. Yeah. Those are not. Those are from from our Discord, not your Discord. So, if you're listening to this at nighttime, don't burn out your eyes and try to check Discord. It's just us. Oh. Um. Magic keyboard. I need to do magic keyboard for Mac. Cause now they're all about the. The lock button. Eject key. It's for big iMac with its super drive. What? It usually gets pressed when I need to kick out a backup DVD, but the rest of the time oh, it sits alone. You don't have the Gen 2 Magic Keyboard? No. That's what I was uh, telling you. I have the Gen 1. The that, weird curvy one where it like curves up top. I think because that's older, so they might have an eject button, but the new Macs yeah, don't. That's for the older Macs. And then I have the Generation ma generation 1 Magic Trackpad as well, which is like the same shape. Yeah. I, I didn't buy the Magic Trackpads because I didn't think it was necessary. It's not necessary, but it's nice. It's really I interesting that the, the way they... Because the Magic Trackpad. Because the like, Magic is bad. The Magic Trackpad's amazing. Before we got our new iMac, like a year ago... The iMac we had before, we had one of the older Magic trackpads, but even the older one was amazing. Like, it's literally yeah. like you're using a laptop, but the trackpad's bigger. I have the yeah. other one. So, on the new Magic trackpad, they have, like, haptics, like, what's in, like, the the new MacBook ones. But it's really interesting what they did with the older one. They have, like, these little, like, things that are on the bottom of the trackpad. So, whenever you push down, they click in, and it registers. Well, it's actually clickable as a click yeah it's clickable i mean apple really nailed the haptic for the presses and stuff it's like it feels very natural yeah well, and it's cool. cool because the generation one magic trackpad is completely mechanical but uh -huh. it still feels the same as yeah when I, haptic touch. When I still have the um turn the touch id uh, thing the home button from my uh, iphone 7 it it actually I didn't know it was not clickable until like two two months in. Like, like you didn't know it was, it was haptic. Yeah, cause I wasn't really into smartphones when I had my iPhone seven. So what? You just never really let it go dead. Uh, yeah. Uh, cause I I always thought it was actually a button, but when I when I turned it off one time, it actually did. Uh, and so I knew. That it was actually haptic. Did you I think it was broke? Did you think it was broken at first? Uh, yeah. I just thought when it turned off, like some mechanisms just stopped it from clicking. 
I wasn't into smartphones at that time. Yeah. Was it like when the iPhone 7 was new? Uh, yeah. Well, like when my parents got so it. That's so late 2016. Yeah, so I was actually just using the smartphone as a like regular smartphone, not actually minding the tech behind it and stuff. Yeah. It's crazy that so many people like hate on the haptic buttons, but if I'm being honest, I feel better than mechanical ones. Uh, do you prefer Touch ID or Face ID? Uh, Touch ID. Touch ID, probably. I mean, Touch ID uh, some, uh, failed on me sometimes, so I'd say Face ID. Face ID fails at me sometimes, too. It'll, like, randomly turn off and it'll make me type in my passcode. It mainly doesn't fail on me, but... Because Touch ID, uh, like, three, two out of, like, five times it fails on me. Two out of five? Yeah, like... Well, Just if register, I... register multiple fingerprints. That's like yeah, I did know that until, like, uh, last year. Because <laughs> hmm. so I, I used to have an, I used to have an uh, iPhone 8. I, I saw a video from Mr. Who's the Boss, and uh, basically he's taught me that trick. What, the uh, multiple fingerprint? Yep. Yeah, I've learned that there. Well, I kind of figured it out on my own, but I did see that video. It's because it makes sense to have, like, Face ID on something like an iPad, which uh -huh. is weird because iPad is the one with the Touch ID. Just because I, I don't want to put the my finger all the way up to the top of the device every time I want to unlock it. I think it's pretty clever because it's the power button and the Touch ID at the same time. It's cool, but like realistically, I would yeah. rather tap tap the screen to turn it on, and then it's already using Face ID. Whereas uh -huh. on an iPhone, whenever you pick it up, your thumb is already on the button, so it would make more sense to swap the unlock mechanisms. Yeah, on an iPhone like, and iPad. Yeah. But what? Which? What do you think costs more? Like probably uh, Face ID. I think I Touch think, ID because they got I think a button. Face ID. Yeah, they got Face a... ID because they have to add the extra sensors to get the curvature of your face and stuff. I mean, that is mostly software. But yeah. There is like the yeah, but there's or still some use. hardware to it. Yeah. I don't really know. I'm gonna leave that unanswered. Let's continue with these trivia questions. What does? Oh, let's see. Who designed the first Apple logo? Um, I don't even know. Uh, I'm skipping that one. I know what it looks like. It was uh, Isaac Newton holding an apple, yeah. laying next to a tree, and it was black and white, with kind of like a postage stamp. I mean, it's definitely not Steve Jobs, but may I don't know. Maybe he assisted in it. Ronald Wayne. Never heard of him. If I mean, Joe I, gets this right, I swear he's looking it up. I I heard of him, but I don't think he designed the logo. I've never heard of him. I think my friend's uncle is named Ronald Wayne something. I'm, I'm not he, using Google. I'm just guessing. I, think he was, I believe you. I think it was Ronald the Wayne was one of the original guys with Apple. Yeah, yeah. I think he was one of the co-founders, but... They probably hired no, a designer. There's only three co-founders. I think the other one was Steve. Uh, Steve. And he stole the- Steve Wozniak, Steve Jobs. And I think Ron uh, Ronald Wayne. I'm gonna look that up. What's the answer? Three co-founders of Apple. Steve Wozniak, Steve Jobs, and Ronald Wayne. Yeah. I think okay. it's Ronald Wayne. Look the it next, up, though. The Look next question. The... Well, we're going to re reveal the answers after all the questions. We're just speeding through them right now. Okay. The next question is, who, uh, what does URL stand for in context of the internet? I know this one. Easy. Yeah, that, this one's easy. Univ... I'm not going to... I'm not... I want Joe to type it first.
I'm not sure about that one. What is it? What do you put? Let's see. I learned that at school. Uniform requirements located? <laughs> yeah, it's uniform resource locator. Yeah. I, I believe so. And the next question, let's just type our answers in the trivia questions chat so I don't have to keep going back and we forth. Don't, we don't have permission to send messages in the channel. Oh, uh, well, you're, you have the author role, don't you? Oh, you lost it for some reason. Give you the author role. There you go. Fine. And then I'll give Joe the author role. Alright, the next question is Which tech giant was originally known as Auction Web? I'm just gonna guess eBay. It's not Facebook Marketplace, so it's eBay. Next question. Uh, what is the name of the programming language developed by Sun Microsystems? I know it's not Java. Is it ARM? Might be Java, I don't know. Just put Java. I'll put Python. I don't think it was Python. Me neither, but that's my guess. I think Python was developed by only one person, a Dutch really? programmer. Yeah, I think it was a Dutch programmer. Uh, Joe, are you gonna, are you gonna add a guess? I guess not. What is the name? This one's easy. What is the name of the virtual assistant developed by Amazon? I'm not gonna say it because I don't want to set off anyone's thing. Joe, Joe says Java to the other question. Um, yeah. But Which Alexa, one? but without the B. Actually, Alexa. That, probably, that probably set it off anyway. Which one? Alexa or Echo? It well, might be Echo. The actual virtual assistant is Alexa, but Echo is the hardware. Yeah. That's like saying Apple's virtual assistant is HomePod. Yeah. E Echo is just the name of the actual hardware so i think you could the uh phrase though you could change it to like hey yeah. Amazon or something. i think it's just echo and alexa we'll echo alexa. dot all right i'm gonna reveal the answers i'm going to actually take away the author roles from both of y'all so y'all yeah, have to go and change your answers. All right, here we go. <coughs> Question one is, because when the... Bruh. Sorry. Question one, wait, was that you or was that Joe? Uh, me, Spotify. Oh, I just muted Joe, sorry. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, that wasn't Josh. me. I was about to say, what was that? <laughs> um, Question one. Who invented the World Wide Web? The answer is Tim Berners-Lee. Did anybody guess that? No. No, I guessed Bill Gates. I yeah. Guess. I didn't have any clue. Question two. What was the first publicly available Google service? I think we all got that right. With Google search. Google search engine. Question three. Where is Silicon Valley located? The Silicon Valley is located in Northern California in the southern part of the San Francisco Bay Area. San I said, Bay. I think San I said Jose south, the south of the, part. south That's of the Bay is what I said, so. I think I got it. Did, did uh, I most of us got it. You just said California in general, so I don't know if that counts or not. We'll just say it does. So we all get a point for that. So now we each have two points. Who's the co-founder of Microsoft? I Paul said Paul Allen. Allen. Paul you Allen. said Paul Allen. We all got I that. I don't. I don't know if Joe got Paul Allen. I'm just gonna go up and check. Yeah, he he put Paul Allen. Yeah, we all put Paul Allen. All right. What is the storage capacity of a standard Blu-ray disc? Joe got this right somehow. 
with 25 gigabytes. I don't see how that makes any sense, but changed it because well, I each each layer of the disc is 25 gigabytes, and there's only two layers. So it didn't say a layer; th it said a standard Blu-ray disc. I did. Yeah, but there's the a layer. Disc. There's layers to the standard Blu-ray disc. And each layer is 25 gigabytes, so combined it, it would be 50. But it didn't say, how, what's the storage capacity of a layer of Blu-ray disc? It said, a standard Blu-ray disc has how many layers, so... I mean, not how many... I don't know why I said that. God, forget that. It said, what's the storage capacity of the entire Blu-ray disc, not just the layer, so... Yeah, so me and Ashley got it wrong then. Yep, good job, Joe. So now, you have... Three. Joe, you have four points, and Isaac and I have two. Who designed the first Apple logo? The first Apple logo was designed by Rob Janoff. None of us got that. No. What does URL stand for in the context of the internet? A URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator. Isaac and I got that correct. Joe did not. So we are all tied at four points. Uh -huh. No, because Which... y'all didn't get the original Apple logo right. Neither did you. Hmm? Neither did you. I know, so y'all are at three and I'm at four. No, we're all Be at four, Joe. Uh um, which tech giant was originally known as Auction Web? eBay. eBay. Alright, we got that. All so now we're all at five points. What is the name of the programming language? Uh, Java. So both y'all got it. So now y'all two have six. I have none. And then we all got Alexa. So y'all two are actually tied. I'm going to look up a bonus question to ask y'all. That sounds good with me. All right. Um, let's do this. When was the first iPhone released? Easy. And I need... I know, but I need the... The the month and the day as well and if if none of y'all get it right that's okay the winner will just be whoever makes it closest so joe what's your answer easy know that by heart okay what do you say isaac nice isaac gets it correct he got it by the minute june 29th 9 41 2007 Joe says it's a typo. All right, man, that's hard to believe because he put he put June twenty seventh. All right, I'll do one more question. Just find Joe. I'll give that one to you, and we'll do one more question. Okay, let's see. Whoever can name the most Mac OS versions, and I need you to start DMing them to me. Just name as many Mac OS versions as possible, and whoever gets the most will win. Just, you have to DM them though, so the other person doesn't see them. Isaac, I see you typing. Yeah, I'll just type it and copy it and DM it to you. All right. While everybody is doing that, turn up the music. If y'all like this music, you can get it over at upbeat.io. It's all copyright free, and the link is in the description. They have a bunch of different vibes, you know what I mean? Like calm, energetic, stuff like that. And it's high quality, made by artists all around the world. Some. Isaac, how many do you have? Uh, so two, three, four, five, six, eight. All right. Oh, what one? Okay, I got. 
Yeah, we're supposed to DM it. Whatever. Um. All right. Jawash says cheetah, puma, jaguar, panther, tiger, leopard, snow leopard, mountain lion. Wait, snow leopard, lion, mountain lion, mavericks, Yosemite, capitan. Okay. So I actually have Joe's Google account yeah. password. So I'm going to sign into his account really quickly. And uh I have to go in 5 minutes. All right. Well, we're pretty much done here. I just want to see something. You want to check his history? Yep. I might be logged out. Yeah, it sent him a verification code. I doubt he's going to accept that. So, I'll just have to take his word for it. Well, let's count up the results. Isaac, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And Joe has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wow. You won by one single answer. Bruh. Great job, Isaac. Isaac, you are the official first champion of Powered On Trivia. That's I only knew I only knew all the cats, the ones where they did cats for the names. I know it's pretty easy to remember. It's just all the cats. And then yeah. let's see. After that, there's uh, Mavericks, Catalina. I'm doing this off the top of my head. Mavericks, Catalina, Sonoma, Monterey, Ventura. Um, Yosemite. All the ones, but those ones are kind of older. I think it's so, Capitan, though, not Captain. Cap yeah. That was probably just a typo. Yeah. Introducing Mac OS Captain. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed this episode of the Powered On Tech Podcast. This is episode either 9 or 10. I don't keep track anymore. It's in the title. And we will see you in the next podcast. Peace. Bye, guys.